feel the love. How, how's everybody doing this evening? All right. Oh, oh Emeril Lagasse here. You know, there's something very special about a warm, lazy summer's day. At least for me, it is. Makes you want to, like, run right downstairs and whip something up in the kitchen, right? Especially for that someone special, you know? So tonight, check it out. I thought we'd start off with a cool glass of Emerald's frozen milk punch. Ah, oh, to die for. <laughs> a warm basket of plantation muffins. Show you a little trick. Oh, yes. And then some kicked up ambrosia parfaits. Ambrosia. Ambrosia. Then we'll probably all save ourselves for a little room for an apple smoked bacon, cheddar cheese, and potato omelet. Oh. Little trick from a friend of mine on there, Camellia Grill. You're not gonna, uh, not gonna believe it. Did that all right with you guys? Yeah. All right. We're gonna get cooking because brunch is served right here on Emerald Live. Getting hungry over here? Little, uh, little breakfast items, you know? Well, it's, you know, you got the traditional things, you know, Danish, croissants, banana bread, waffles, love all that, maple syrup, delicious pancakes. Now that's like some silver dollar pancakes, don't you think? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> nice crispy bacon, all those wonderful breakfast items that we're used to. Well, I thought we'd go in the other direction today, absolutely. Uh, we got an incredible show. Milk Punch Eye Openers is what they call them in, uh, in New Orleans. You're not going to believe what we're going to do this. But while you do whatever you're going to do, we're going to rock out. Because Doc Gibbs and Cliff is in the house. When we come back, Frozen Milk Punch, stick around. Now, is everybody in the mood now for brunch? You're all in the mood, huh? Give it up for Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. A little brunchy, a little brunchy music. Loving that. You know, we, um, in the South, in New Orleans, particularly in Louisiana, we have brunch and one of the ways that we usually start, you can start with a basic mimosa, little fresh orange juice or tangerine juice and a little champagne. And then there are these cocktails, particularly in New Orleans, like Sazerac and Absinthe Suisse. And then there are these eye openers called milk punches. And generally uh, made uh, with either milk, cream, combination, half and half, little bit of tiny, just a tiny bit of booze, just <laughs> tiny bit. And they kind of open your eyes a little bit, and then you get in the brunch mode. You would too if you had, anyhow. So I said to myself, self, how do we kick these up a couple of notches, you know? And we've come up with it, so I want to share it with you. When you want to get your eyes open, you can do this. You can make these the day before. Show you how we do it. I've got, uh, I'm using half and half right here in this container. Now, generally, you don't do them in a container. Or sometimes, if you're having company over for brunch, you make a half gallon or a gallon of these things and, <laughs> you know, just keep them in the ice chest. Well, we're going to show you how to kick it up a notch. So, again, I'm using uh, half and half. 
I have just basically like three quarts of half and half that I'm going to do here. Hey, did you guys uh, see the our new gadget here? Don, oh, you check it out. Man. The cast of The Sopranos sent it over to us as a little, it's a little housewarming present. That's nice. Sent us the sink and yeah, yeah. It's a very successful show, so they have a extra money, I guess, and decided to help us out here at Emerald Live. But did a great maybe job. you'll get some drums next. You know who hey. knows. You know. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyhow, thank you very much. Um, okay, so we're back to the half and half. Mexican vanilla. Yeah, I'm not making that up. It's. It's a very, it's, it's really wonderful vanilla. It has a wonderful flavor to it. You can kind of smell that. And it's kind of very, very perfumish. And I'm going to flavor now our half and half with some of that Mexican vanilla. And if you like more, you can add more. And there are other things that you can flavor it with. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to sweeten this. Because I don't know where you get your half and half. Where we get ours, it doesn't come sweetened. So... We're going to mix in the vanilla, and then we'll sort of taste that and see if we have enough vanilla. Yeah. <laughs> One more notch. Now we're going to sweeten it with a little simple syrup, because if we added just sugar in here, we'd get that granule mix, because the sugar really hasn't dissolved. So what you do is you make a little simple syrup, which is basically just water, H2O and sugar, bring it up to a little simmer, gets it all nice, and then we'll sweeten this. It's an easy way to sweeten this. Great thing for iced tea, too, guys, if you want to make a little simple syrup. You're supposed to add, oh, maybe about a cup. But hey, it's like, get another spoon, taste and see if that's how sweet you want it. You don't want it too sweet, it's an eye opener. Not dessert. We'll add it all. All right. Yeah, we'll add it all. Now. Whatever, whatever kind of alcohol that you like, or if you want to not make it any alcohol, just add more vanilla. Um, so that little bit of alcohol. I'm going to have a little bit of bourbon. No, you're supposed to. This is, and then you have a little bit of. I'm having cognac. I'm spoiling myself right now, you know. So we'll have a little cognac. It's an eye opener, and then of course some rum. You could use dark rum, you know. So we use a little bit of rum like this. You got to be very careful how much alcohol cuz it won't freeze, you know? You get you get too much in there, you just you're in trouble. The whole idea of this thing, you get it and then you put it in the freezer. Well, I'll I'll show you what you know, I had had one here doc that we just kind of you want to do this a good day in advance or a couple of days in advance and when you're ready for this eye open to get started, right? You get you see it's look, frozen, right? You get one of these ice picks. You probably have had one in the drawer for 30 years. You never knew what to do with it except chase your husband around, right? <laughs> so you get like this ice pick thing like this, and you just kind of, you know, break it up a little bit like this. And then what happens is you're ready. You know, the guests are there. And what you do is you get a spoon now, and you s see that you kind of shave that like this, put it inside of the glass, shave it like this again inside of the glass and then the way that I like to simply just garnish it like this is very simple. I take a little bit of fresh nutmeg. Anything I can use the nutmeg for to use it because I got to let it out of this cage every little now and then, you know, so, you know, think about, well, okay. So a little fresh nutmeg like this and uh, just a little beautiful sprig of mint. And that's how simple you got this frozen milk punch. Frozen. Well, we're going to get a few milk punches together. And when we come back, another lot. Stick around. We'll be right back. Thank you.
Scott Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back. Emma Lagasse here. And we're really in the brunch mode. At least I'm in the brunch mode. A couple of those uh, frozen milk punches, and you'll be in the mode. Have you, have you tried it? See, you can, you can, it's, like it's a, almost like a dessert. You can, you can spoon it. You can get a big straw if you want. You can, you know, hey. Yeah, and then if you want to kick it up a notch, you know, you can go over to the, uh, well, anyhow, we won't go there. So, what's the next thing? We've got our milk punch. These uh, plantation muffins from a friend, Suzanne, makes these. It's incredible, because they're made with cooked rice. You're kind of wondering what you do with cooked rice? These are big in the South. So uh, here's what we start with. Generally, when you're making a muffin, you have some sort of solidified shortening. Lard, you know, shortening, you know, that stuff with the C, you know. <laughs> but this little trick with Suzanne's muffins, using oil, vegetable oil, it gives it a wonderful texture, not too dense. You want to keep them kind of light, especially if we're going to put rice in this thing. Watch how simple this is. We get a muffin tin, and you want to grease them up. If you uh, like those things that you put in there, you know, those frilly things, go ahead, knock yourself out. You know, blue, yellow, pink, you know. <laughs> go ahead. I just take a little vegetable oil, oil them up like that. Then I take the liquid vegetable oil, because generally what you would do is you would cream it. If you're using butter or using shortening, you would cream it right now with the sugar. Well, we're going to do the same principle. We're going to take our oil and our sugar. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to sort of dissolve this a little bit. Simple. Then we're going to add a couple of eggs to this. This is generally a good time when you want to use a whisk at this point to make sure you get it really good and dissolved. And at the same time, I think by using a whisk, you want to sort of aerate this a little bit. We're like kind of pumping a little bit of air into this. It's changing the color you can see right now of the eggs with the sugar and the oil. Just get it all nice and good and dissolved, a little aeration in there. Now, here's what we're going to do the next step. <sighs> Loving this new gadget. Now, dry ingredients, flour, baking powder, that'll make it poofy, a little salt, and we'll sift these. That's the big reason why you sift them. Make sure all of those big lumps, in case the cat went in there or something, you know, hit it. <laughs> Yeah, you never know. They hide out every now and then, you know? You know? Oh, the parakeet, you know, I mean, droppings, you know, so. So you sift it. Now, then what you do is you bring the dry ingredients over. See, we don't make a mess. Then we get our batter. We start incorporating the flour into that egg and sugar vegetable oil mixture. Then of course we need to get our, our liquid and we're going to use milk. We're going to use a little bit of milk. You can always add, but it's very difficult to take away. And if you did add too much, you can always just add a little bit more flour. But we're going to see how this batter is looking right now. And you see how it's looking lumpy like this? It's not together. Well, it's going to do that because we're not really using a machine or we're not using a whip right now. Add the rest of that milk. Muffin batter shouldn't be very thick. All right, now what we're going to do is this. We're going to whisk it up, make sure it's nice and smooth, the batter. Just breaking down those lumps. Now, at this point, folks, this is a nice consistency of this muffin batter. You see that? So, you want blueberries, you can put blueberries in it. You want 
whole grain, put whole grain in there. You want blackberries, strawberries, put it in there. This particular plantation muffin is with cooked rice, about a cup. I added the vanilla in there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to fold that rice over and right into the batter. You could add rice and bananas. Now, you want to fill these cups about 3 quarters of the way, 375 degrees, 400 in between there. And these particular muffins are going to take about 25 minutes to bake. Nice and golden brown. How you fill your cup up just like this, or you can get it in a measuring, pour some of the batter in a measuring, about three quarters of the way like that. 375, 425 minutes. They get beautifully nice and golden brown, just like this. They don't, they're, they're a little dense, so they don't like pop out of the, you know, like a lot of the muffin batters that you have. They just sort of pop out of the, out of the pan. These are going to stay a little bit, they're very light, but they're going to stay a little more dense in the texture, A, because of the vegetable oil, also because we have rice. Now, I don't know if it's a southern thing. The best way to serve these plantation muffins is your favorite jelly and good butter. Yeah, you got to have butter. <laughs> Absolutely. Little muffins like that. Little muffins like that. The first little dish to our, you guys can hang on to that, make some friends behind you. <laughs> Beautiful ladies, have some of those, make some friends back there. When we come back, I'm going to tell you about ambrosia. You haven't seen ambrosia in a long time. I have. When we come back, I'm going to show you an ambrosia salad. Stick around, we'll be right back. Doc Gibbs and Clinton. I say, Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. How are the muffins? Not bad, huh? You want to, uh, at home, when they come out of the oven, uh, what you want to do is you want to let them cool in those baking pin, uh, tins, five or ten minutes, cool them down a little bit. Then you can just simply turn them over on a cooling rack. It's the best way and uh, generally the cooling rack so that there is enough air underneath also so that they aerate and they don't get all flat on one side, et cetera, et cetera. This is a good way. Now, you can do them in advance and keep them in an airtight container. They'll be beautiful 24 hours later as well. But there's nothing better than them when they come right out of the oven. Let them cool a little bit. Delicious texture. Now, another southern thing, you don't really see it much anymore, it was called ambrosia. It's like a fruit salad, and they call it ambrosia. And the tr traditional southern ambrosia was always made with bananas, with pineapple, segments of orange, and or coconut, if you like coconut. I happen to like coconut, so. But we're going to change it up a little bit because, uh, you know, as you start having these, wanting to have these brunches on those little warm, lazy Sundays, can't beat the fruit that's available. So you can twist the ambrosia any way that you want. Maybe you want to add apples or you want to add pears, different berries that are coming out. You can really get creative. But I find that if you have at least a little bit of pineapple, orange, banana, and or coconut, and whatever you're going to change. And then generally what they would do is they would serve this sort of on just a, in a lettuce cup. In the old days, they would put this ambrosia in there, sprinkle it with coconut, 
And uh, I thought we would kick it up a couple of notches and do it in a parfait setting. So I want to show you how we're going to do that. First, the ambrosia. Fresh pineapple, preferably, with its juice, chopped up. I mean, it's a common sense thing. I mean, this is like bite-sized pieces. So you wouldn't, like, you know, cut the pineapple. <laughs> but then again, maybe you would. Hey, that's OK. You know, there's no pineapple police out there, so. Then we got uh, going to make the original ambrosia first, some beautiful orange segments, again, fresh. And then it's the andor coconut kind of thing. So we'll add a little bit of that. And then the banana. You want to kind of have them decently ripe so that they taste good when they're using banana. Little color on them. You don't want them, uh, you know, where they're not ripe and then they're still so firm and green that uh, they don't really taste good. A couple of days and that will happen. And um, basically, I just take the ends off the banana here, and I just kind of split, take the peel instantly off like this. And then simply, you can do the size that you want. I'm going to add a little bit more banana in here. So we'll add one more banana. And that's the basic ambrosia. It's what you have right here. Generally, a little, the juice maybe of a half a lemon to keep everything fresh. But I'm going to now take our basic ambrosia and kick it up a few notches. All right, so now we got the basic ambrosia. Now we're going to, it's the basic southern ambrosia. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the Emerald Live ambrosia. So here's what we're going to do. First thing, let's take some whipping cream or heavy cream. Yeah, I got to use this new mixer, you see? Yeah, it's a new gadget. Look, it's the new kicked up. Look, check this thing out. It's like a submarine. I've got to sweeten the whipping cream because you know why, you know. It's little vanilla I like to have in there too. But look, you don't want to have this thing on like, you know, 25, you know. It's all the way down Broadway, cream, stained all the windows everywhere. They couldn't see. They thought a whole, no, I won't go there. Anyhow. No, it wasn't a pigeon thing. So you want to go start slow. And we're going to make some just delicious, fresh whipped cream. Nice chill bowl, put it in there. As it starts going, you can, you know, you can bring it up a few notches if you want. So we got that going on. Now, let's, uh, while we're whipping our cream, let's kick up and make the Emerald Live Ambrosia, shall we? Let me show you how we're going to do this. A Little bit more banana. I'm going to add some beautiful strawberries, just cut up a little bit. Look at the size of these blackberries. Oh, I know. You know, I used to go around and you kind of do one of those things. You can't do them with this. It'll plug you up. So we add a little bit of blackberries like that. Doc, I mean, look at the size, look at the size of even these raspberries. Yeah, make sure you give one to Cliff. He never gets, you, know, you never share anymore. Hey, Cliff. Yeah, you don't share anymore. Look Let's at the size of that, that dog. Mm. Unbelievable. So we're mm. going to add some beautiful raspberries in here. And then I'm going to uh, show you what I'm, what I'm going to do. Depending on how sweet the berries are and your fruits, you may want to add just a tiny bit of sugar. Not a lot. Just a little bit of sugar to kind of sweeten them up a little bit, right? The juice of a lemon, the acidity is going to keep it all nice and fresh, bright. They're not going to get all. And then what I like to do is take a little bit of that fresh mint. I mean, you know how mint is. You got it in your garden, it takes over. You come back from vacation, you can't find your house. There's mint 
wrapped around almost the block. So you got to use that stuff. So I like to just use it in this ambrosia like this, you see? Hey, more coconut, why not, right? Yeah. Now that looks like, that looks like some ambrosia mixture to me. All right, here's what we do. See if it's sweet enough for us. Hey, you can use your fingers, it's all right. There's no police here. We'll see if you think we need it sweeter or what? It's okay. Good. All right, let's kick this thing up a couple of notches here. See if we can get, maybe we'll make it to Staten Island. All right. La, 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 la. Now, depending on how and what you're whipping your cream for is, you know, really how stiff you want it. I'm not going to go full stiff with this cream. I'm going to go sort of, come on. Please. Look at this, Doc. These new machines, they got handcuffs on them now, look. All right, here's what we're gonna do. See, I'm not going just semi, you know, the three quarter stiff. All right, now here's what we're gonna do. Here's why I like to kick it up a couple of notches like this. Ambrosia, right inside of there. Little ambrosia, little ambrosia. Some of that semi-stiff cream in there, just jam it right in there. Then, some more ambrosia. So you can either like leave it like this, or what I like to do, just take a little bit more like this, you see? A little more? All right. A little bit of mint like this. It's that mint thing, you know. I'm trying to use up that mint. A little mint thing like this here. There it is. How's that? A little brunch ambrosia, right? We come back, I'm gonna show you a secret with an omelet. Apple smoked bacon, white cheddar cheese, potato omelet. Stick around! wondering where all those noises were coming from, you know, if you just joined us. Doc, what, what kind of drum is that? This is called a guica. A guica. Yes, from and Brazil. we got to show them the inside of this thing. You see how that thing works? It's got this little... Reed. Like a reed like that. Wet cloth. Wet, cl wet cloth. And you just kind of pull it. <laughs> Doc Gibbs, everybody! You ever um, sometimes get a craving? Can't get any better than a brunch, a little omelet. And uh, sometimes uh, when I don't want to cook at home, there's this place, a little grill called Camellia Grill. 
And uh, it's very simple. It's just a little joint. And they do a great job and they make incredible omelets on this griddle. Unfortunately, you know, we at home don't have a lot of those big griddles. We can really fold and do those types of omelets. A couple of them that are my favorite from Camellia Grill. They do one with this potato and cheese. And then you can also get chili on top of it. Oh, yeah, what a way to start your day, right? I mean, <laughs> whoo, get out of there. You're just like, got the guica drum, we're ready to go. You know, here we go. But you can do these kind of griddles that you can put either on your electric stove or on your gas stove. And um, I've, got, I've had this on a little bit. I'm going to kind of put this on about medium heat until I get a feel for how it is. And what we're going to do, I've peeled the potato, and I'm going to grate the potato, show you a little trick about that. I had this wonderful apple smoked bacon. It's a pork fat thing, what can I say, you know? When you feel real bad before brunch, generally I just get a couple of slices of these out, just kind of put it on your forehead, kind of make you feel good. But what's even better is you chop it up and you render it down. And you got this crispy apple smoked bacon. You can do hickory smoked. There's all kinds of different bacon. Cheddar cheese, little butter. Watch how simple this is, but you want to talk about delicious. And then I'm going to show you this other trick of what they do at Camellia Grill with their eggs. We'll take a potato with a box grater, and you just grate it up. Now, what happens a lot of times of the year most times of the year with the potatoes, particularly if you're using like these russet, Idaho, those type of white potatoes like that, you're going to get a lot of starch. So what we'll do, I had it in water to keep it nice and white. What I do to do this is, see all the starch in there? But what I got to do is this. I usually get a towel and just kind of press the water and the starch out like that. You'll be amazed how much juice will actually come out. This is the easiest way. You can do it with your hand. You lose some of the potato that way. I find if you just do it with a cloth like this and really press it out, then you get the potato. Now, here's the first step. See how wet that was? A Lot of moisture in there. Now, here's the first step. We take a little bit of oil on our griddle And what we're going to do, just kind of using a spatula, we're going to just kind of make sure that our griddle, like this, it has a lip, as you can see. We're going to make sure that our griddle has got enough oil. Then what we're going to do is we're going to start this omelet by putting a potato on the oil in this griddle. Now you can get a sense for how high or how low that you can need to kind of do this. Because you can't just like jack it on full blast. I mean, you can't, you know, it's like gonna, it'll, it'll be like a blackened omelet, you know? <laughs> so you gotta just kind of work with the heat. That's why these knobs like this, you see? That's why they have these different temperature things on here. I don't know if you've like figured that out yet, but you know. Now. So we're good. it's kind of like having like a hash brown, bacon, your eggs all in one shot. Now, the other thing is, folks, don't be panicked. Don't panic. It's like, look, if you, uh, your potato starts taking a lot of the oil out of that, you know, it's, then look, don't panic. Just add a little bit more oil to it. We want to start getting these hash browns brown like this on a griddle. Now, the other thing is this. We need to add a little bit of salt to season them up. A little bit of pepper. Then if you, you know, want to kick it up a couple of notches, you can always get a little bit of essence like that. Bam! Just, bam! Just, it's early in the morning, you know, bam! It's kind of, bam! Just. All right, so now we're going to, all right, now I'm going to show you one quick trick. While these potatoes are starting to brown, here's what they do at Camellia Grill. 
the order comes in, they crack the eggs right inside of a blender like this. They put them in a blender. Gets a lot of aeration. Changes color like this. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish it. And then, another notch. Stick around. We'll be right back. Gibbs and Cliff, and you have landed on Emerald Live here, and we're kicking brunches up, notches unknown. Ain't that right, guys, right? Yeah. All right. See, now we got the that potato, kind of like that hash brown deal, right? See how nice that's working now? Now, look at how our eggs just kind of did that, you see? You kind of get them all nice and fluffy like this. And then the next step is, what I like to do is, Re-put the bacon back on a little bit, just to get a little heat out of it. And then what you do is you're ready to make it, start making your omelet. You see how fluffy? <laughs> now, oh, we'll make another one. You're gonna let it start doing this. Now, if you wanna change your mind, you could always just like go, you can do like scrambled eggs too, you see? Yeah, I mean, you can do that. And how they do it at Camellia Grill, they, like, fold it because they've got this big griddle, and they'll be able to fold it like a little package, you know? Now, before we're going to start turning this over, what I like to do, just make sure that our egg is getting everywhere. And then what we're going to do is this. Before we start folding it, I'm going to add some more bacon. I'm going to add that cheddar cheese right down the old right down the old pike like this, you see? Ah, why not? Add more bacon. <laughs> then what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna fold this over, you see? Fold that over like that. Come on this side here, we're gonna fold that over. This little package like this. Fold that side over. And just keep folding it over like that. Oh, right, that looks good. Now, what are you guys going to eat? <laughs> Generally, what they'll do is after they, you know, they got this big griddle, like I said, they'll fold it over, fold it over, put whatever you want in it. Mushrooms, like I said, the chili thing at the end, that usually works. But basically, what happens, when in doubt, just use two spatulas like this, you see? Yeah. Flip it over. See, nice little package like that. And then generally what they'll do, they'll garnish it before they make another one. I like, I'm very simple, very simple guy. I like to just garnish mine with a little more cheese, you know, like that. Some chives, so I like chives little essence and then what you can do is if you know you want to like take it to like another notch you know you're feeling live again you can just BAM just kind of kick it up just like one little notch like that you see now how they generally will do this is they'll like cut it like in pieces like this and they'll cut it like this in pieces. See, like that. Feel free to bam it anytime you want, ladies. <laughs> then you go like that, a little. And that's basically our brunch. Muffins. Ambrosia. Hey, that frozen deal in the front, you know. <laughs> and then a wonderful omelet, whatever you want to put in it, it's just incredible. I'm Emeril Lagasse. Thanks for joining me tonight. Kick up your Sunday brunch a notch this week, will you? And we're going to rock out again with Doc Gibbs. See you tomorrow, everybody. We love you.